The Long Game acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which this podcast is produced. We would also like to acknowledge any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders listening to this podcast. We would also like to acknowledge that mindfulness is an important and ongoing part of life. Breathe in, breathe out. When the stakes are high and all eyes are on you, how do you perform to your potential? More than ever, the practice of mindfulness has become a pathway to harnessing potential to drive performance of athletes around the world. Through the lens of some of Australia's most inspiring athletes and sport professionals, we take a deep dive into the different techniques, tools, and life lessons they've learned along the way. I'm Ben Robbins, Head of Mental Health and Wellbeing at the St Kilda Football Club. And I'm Jared Ruffhead. And this is The Long Game, brought to you by AIA Australia. Jack Sinclair is a perfect example of how a change in mindset can bring the best results. The fan favourite saint had overcome his setbacks before being drafted, but was thrown a new challenge after being dropped at the start of the COVID-affected 2020 season. Since then, Jack has risen above the challenges thrown his way to become one of our most consistent and impressive players. Ruffy and I know Sinks pretty well through our time here at the Saints, but even we were surprised talking to him in how his shift in attitude and maturity has sharpened him into the player he is today. From the soft-spoken off-field persona to the emerging on-field leader, we can't wait for you to hear Jack Sinclair's interview on the latest episode of The Long Game. Welcome to this week's guest to The Long Game, Ben. One of our favourites at the football club, Jack Sinclair. Jack, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Now, I'm going to get this out of the way early. Big St Kilda man you are, 40 favourite players, Robert Harvey, as we all know. Um, There's a bit of a myth out there, though. There is. Um, who, who did you barrack for as a kid? I actually went for Carlton when I was old enough. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought a lifelong St Kilda supporter. Yep. What's going on here? Yeah, there's been a few. Uh, probably the media team here hasn't helped me much. Yeah, been calling me a lifelong Saints fan. I think it's what, what's confused them is that I've always said, I've always wanted to play for the Saints, which is true because my grandfather did. So I always wanted to play for the Saints. There's a few photos of me when I was younger, probably up until the age of about five in Saints jumpers. Saints kid. Um, But yeah, when I was old enough to make the decision myself, I chose Carlton because that's who my dad went for. But what remained is that I still wanted to play for the Saints. So you've been here nine years? This is my eighth. Eighth year. Eighth year. And it's only just coming out. It comes out now that you barrack for Carlton. Yeah, well... So have you added to the... Uh, at times, yeah. At oh. times, I've, I've got... <laughs> just, just, we just haven't corrected. <laughs> well, sometimes I have, sometimes I haven't. I'm yeah. like, oh, I might be in too deep here. I'll just go along with it. Um, yeah, so it's good to get out of the way. Well, we're, we're newsbreakers as well. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's probably our biggest exclusive so far, I would think, by some margin. Um, since you're our first player on the podcast. Current, 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 current player. Yeah, yeah. And I know you're a big fan. Never miss an episode. Um, no, of course not. Who do you think out of our playing list will be the most flat that we didn't pick them to go on the podcast first? We um, chose you. Probably someone like Hannah's or Higo. Probably love hearing their own voice. Hannah Bree mm-hmm. and yeah. Higgins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I reckon they'd love to be on it. Yeah. Talking about all their interests. I don't know if you guys would get many words in there. Yeah. No, well, they don't want to hear from us since. Like, this is, it's, we're just the deliverers of questions. We're not the facilitators. We we aren't the answer that they want to hear. Yeah, they're not about that. They need to do all the talking themselves, those two. We want to hear from you, mate. And your your story started out a young St. Kilda, I mean, (laughs) Carlton supporter, um, and now here at the Saints. Can we hear a little bit about, about your story, mate? Like, where did it start? When did you first start playing footy? What's what's the Jack, Sting, Jack Sinclair origin story, please? Yeah, I uh, grew up in Q East. Um, lived there till I was about eight. So I started uh, Oz Kick at, at the Q Comets there um, oh, Comets, yep. with my mate Jack Billings. A couple of good photos of us when we were youngsters. So played uh, together throughout your juniors? Played together at Oz Kick, yep. yep. Started under nines. We played footy, cricket and basketball together. Um, yeah, moved to Baldwin. When I was about eight, grew up there until, until I was 22. Um, yeah, went to QS Primary, loved my time there. And then on the Scotch College where I stayed, reunited with my mate Jack. Mm. Um, yeah, loved my time there again. Yeah, footy, cricket, um, 
yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good system there. Playing some amazing grounds and yeah, just a great school with plenty of opportunities. Um, played a bit at the Chargers, got cut when I was bottom age. Chose not to do it as a top ager. Um, wasn't too focused on footy at the time. Yeah. Didn't care too much for it. I was more into cricket and probably didn't think I could get anywhere with footy. Um, I was probably a better cricketer, I, I thought anyway at the time. Um, and yeah, just probably wasn't really enjoying it as much. So. Chose not to do Oakley as an 18-year-old, but stayed playing school footy and started off the year pretty well. Um, and Oakley invited me back down halfway through that year. Um, school footy was a priority though, so I only played the last three games, um, yeah, which wasn't really enough to get drafted, which is fair enough. And they invited me back again the next year as a 19-year-old and played the whole year out. Um, we won the premiership. Um, yeah, pretty good side there and played with D-Mac and... Plenty of other guys who got drafted. I played a few games for the VFL as well for Port Melbourne, and that's how I ended up here as a Saint. Mm. Interesting. Not a typical uh, sort of draft pathway player there. So play your under seventeen year, and what just just didn't enjoy your footy, or what, what was going on there? What, what caused you to step away from the Chargers? Um, yeah, I didn't didn't enjoy footy that year. Year eleven at school, I started off in the first, got dropped about halfway through the year. Um, yeah, I was probably a bit smaller as well. S some things in my game I wasn't very good at, and yeah, I probably thought footy wasn't wasn't going to get me anywhere. Um, I still enjoyed playing with my, my mates, but I probably wasn't playing with as many of my mates at, at that time. And a um, bit of a love for soccer as well, so I thought about giving that a go. Um, wasn't much support for that, so yeah, stuck with footy. Not, so not much support from that from family and friends. Yeah, from everyone. although your old man, <laughs> although your old man, the exception is that right? Yeah, that's correct. He, um, well, probably because he's a soccer fan as well. He just wanted me to be happy and said, if you want to do something different, just go for it. Um, whereas, yeah, my mum's side of the family was, she was pretty flat at me, and um, she actually organised a meeting, which I didn't find out till years later. Um, I was called into the, the office of Barry Price, who was a former Collingwood player and I think Brownlow medalist. He was a yeah, a bit of a hero of ours at, at school. He coached us um, for a few years from year seven and um, yeah, he called me into his office. I think he was finishing up that year and he said, oh, when I come back, I want to see you playing footy. And I was kind of just like, oh, Price, he's put it on me here. <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty intense. So yeah, stuck with footy and he yeah, actually found out a little while later that mum had um, yeah, organised <laughs> organized that to go ahead. So uh, yeah, she wasn't very supportive of it, but... I'm pretty glad she wasn't. Yeah. Uh, not your typical way to get drafted either. Number one in the rookie draft. Did you have any intention, or did you have any inkling that you may have gone in the national draft? Uh, I wasn't too sure. Um, yeah, Saints were definitely the most keen. Um, when it came around, I picked up loans with pick maybe like 41 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought if he hadn't been drafted yet, they were going to take him ahead of me, and um, that's the way. It, that's the way it turned out. So. Yeah, I definitely didn't think I was going to get taken in the national drafts more, if anything, as a rookie. Yeah, wow. Well. And then your initial uh, memories and first few years or first few days, in a sense, of the footy club, how was it when you first came in and that transition from, you know, schoolboy footy, VFL, playing some games at Port Melbourne to then, righto. Were you here? Were we still at Moorabbin back then? Or were we nah, a um, couple of years out at Seaford? Yeah, I, I'm my first three years at Seaford remember the first day, I think most of the boys were in New Zealand on a training camp. Um, so went into the club and I think the first years, or maybe the, the few had flown out already. Maybe the guys who got drafted in the national draft. Um, so went to see if I think like Rui was there and maybe a few of the other older boys. Um, and yeah, but most of the team in New Zealand, all the coaches and yeah, most of the staff. So I think it waited a few days. So we flew over there and met everyone. So it was all yeah, sort of pretty quick. Um, yeah, obviously seeing a guy like Rui, it was yeah, kind of crazy going from junior footy to yeah, seeing him like every day and yeah, straight to a training camp in New Zealand. It was yeah, pretty full on. So since we, you know, I've I've known you since um, the end of 2019 when I arrived at the footy club and in the 2020 season, um, pandemic affected season, fair to say you maybe didn't have the start to that season that you might have been looking for. Can you didn't get into the team until you know, about ha about halfway through the year, or maybe, yep. maybe you know at least a quarter, a third, all the way through the year. What was what was that like, mate? Because I you know I was observing you and watching as you you know we're trying to work your way into the team. What was it like for you 
um, not being selected, playing in you know the, the um, sort of Pandemic scratch Cup. matches, the the MPS Cup Pandemic up Cup. in uh, up in Noosa. How was that, mate? Because that was that, that would I imagine pretty tough. Yeah, it was tough. Um, I think I just moved out at the end of 2019. I was living by myself and. I probably thought things were going pretty good. Like how many, I was how, never, sorry, how many games in 2019? Uh, every game, I think. Right, so you, oh, really? right, so you played yeah. every game 2019 oh, wow. and then Alan Richardson, part of the club, Rats arrives as coach yep. and you, you're not in the team. Yeah. So you hadn't earned his um, well trust, I suppose, to be, mm. to be selected. Yeah, I oh, think okay. well, he coached the forwards that year and I played forward pretty much okay. the whole year. So okay. there was somewhat of a relationship there. Like, And, and yeah. we got along really well, but... Yeah. I don't think I ever really felt like I had earned my spot in the team. Um, probably until this preseason, to be honest, was the first time I actually felt like, right, I, I'm probably playing like round one if I'm maybe not even performing my best. Uh, but on 2022 preseason. No, probably this season. Yeah, in 20, end of 21 to the 22. Yeah. Yeah. This is um, after finishing second in a best and fairest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll get back to that. But yeah, going back, um, yeah, it was tough. So I missed the first seven. I was emergency for every one of them. Um, and because practice matches were sort of happening sporadically, yeah, I, I, I was barely playing any games. So it was hard for them to, to pick me um, because of that. And then when I did play, I actually wasn't playing very well. I think I played maybe the first two games back. Like I was I was a bit rusty. Um, yeah, so I was probably wondering where I fit in. And um, yeah, it was challenging for a number of reasons. And, and obviously the pandemic happened. Um, head up to the hub, I still haven't played. Um, yeah, I don't know. We just just got to keep chipping away, and um, yeah, we had one practice game against Carlton, and I found a bit of form, and I don't know. Everything seemed to just sort of click from there. Um, but yeah, there were definitely things in my game that I needed to improve, and with a new coach coming in, um, yeah, you kind of have to prove yourself again. And Richo picked me more often than not. I didn't play every week, but um, yeah, certainly when Rats came in, yeah, it was a bit different. Um, I'd like you to talk through how you work through that period. Because you know people listening to this for different reasons, but definitely going through adversity and going through challenges in life, and when you feel like maybe failing, um, that you know I was up there at that time in the hub, and it was me. It was, it was tough conditions for the guys who weren't playing the senior team because there was not there wasn't proper games, um, hard to get in, hard to get into. The team team was playing pretty well. What, how did you work through that mentally? What was your mindset and? What advice would you give to people who are struggling with not achieving maybe what they want? Yeah, well, I'd been dropped a few times throughout my career to that date. And, um, you know, sometimes I probably dealt with it pretty well with my attitude and sometimes, yeah, I probably didn't. Um, Sooked it up a bit and probably challenged the coaches at times because I felt like I should have been playing based on what they were telling me. And What's sooking it um, up look like for you? What would you do? Oh... Uh, probably just quiet you could, you could probably tell I wouldn't be saying much um, yeah I don't know I'm, I'm probably pretty pretty quiet as it is but um, <laughs> so that, so normal as I like normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'd just probably be distant and um, yeah. yeah not getting involved in yeah avo- a bit of avoiding yeah avoiding definitely avoidance people that's me yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm very stubborn so yeah <laughs> yeah um, yeah so I, I've been through that before and I knew that to get back in, um, yeah, you just got to keep rocking up with a good attitude and putting your best foot forward. Um, you got to be patient, but I always felt like when I got a chance, I'd be able to stay in the team. Um, so that probably kept me pretty positive, and I think naturally I'm a pretty positive person as well. And even just looking at the hub, like, you know, I was I was single, living by myself. I didn't leave leave behind much compared to a lot of guys who had families and kids and um, you know things like that. So I thought, yeah, it's a good opportunity to get away and. Um, yeah, it wasn't easy early, but yeah, I was always confident that um, you know eventually I'll get my chance, and when I do that, I'll be able to stay in the side. And I know that's that that's what's worked. Um, you've got to have a good attitude, and because if you don't, it's easy for the coaches, easy decision just not to pick you, and simple as that. And I still tell guys that now who might be out of the side or get dropped. You know, there's only one way to go about it, and it's to be to be positive, still help your mates, because um, you can still have an impact even if you're not playing. So you never lost belief. Never lost or, or uh, a li- a, well, a little bit because yeah. yeah, the first couple of games I did play back mm. in the reserves. I was yeah, I wasn't playing that well. Um, yeah. Felt like I was a bit off the pace, and I hadn't played a game yeah for probably longer than anyone at the time. So 
probably lost a little bit, but then, yeah, one game back against Carlton was going well. And, yeah, I think that gave me belief, but also the coaches. Yeah, so I, I ran the boundary that day. It was at Burp and Gary in the Brisbane suburbs. And, um, yeah, that game he played was like he struck or did you only play a half yeah 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 because i traveled the next day i don't know how many touches you had but it was i was some sort of domination and um but you didn't really look back from there for the rest of 2020 and actually beyond that because you go on to you know last season second in the best and fairest and i know we're interested in how that happened jerry aren't we yeah but also you weren't like you weren't a halfback growing up and you weren't a halfback when you first got here. As you said, you were mainly forward um, when you got in the side and it, especially with Rats when he was a forwards coach, you were a part of the forward group. So that changed to halfback too. It was like you almost sold a vision that, hey, if you nail this, this is your spot for the next five to ten years really if you want it. So how did that come about? Yeah, well, even um, that game against Carlton, I think I played inside mid and that probably gave the coaches a bit of belief I wasn't just a sort of half forward. I played some decent footy on the wing in my first sort of few years. Um, but I think that gave Rats a bit of trust in me that I could win my own footy because I think that's probably something that's held me back a bit, um, especially as a junior. And, yeah, again, when Rats come in, he probably didn't really trust me in the contest. Um, so I think that gave them some belief. And, yeah, half back, yeah, I think it was just a, something new, which was pretty exciting to me. Um, I feel like every pre-season up until then, it was kind of like, where do we play where do we play me like is it um, half forward wing inside like I always do a bit of everything um, so even going into last year I wasn't really sure and then maybe just a few weeks before the season or the practice game started he just just put me there and stuck with it for a few weeks and um, you know obviously I'm, I'm still there now so yeah at the time I wasn't really sure if it was going to last but um, yeah I think it's been really good for me and yeah, it's made me a far better player I think have you found the um, introduction in the football club of Ben and his work helpful? Yeah, definitely. He's, he's, um, he's got to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. Contractually he doesn't. Well, he doesn't. But, I mean, for so, like, I mean, for someone outside looking in, the correlation of you arriving and Sinks the way that, you know, you've worked together and whatnot in the three years that we've been here anyway, there's definitely been a trend up in both performance and how you've gone about things as well. Yeah, for sure, but yeah, not just me, a whole bunch of players yeah. I see. Well, you're the guest at the moment, mate. Yeah, no, so yeah, many of my know, teammates. About you. <laughs> so many of my teammates I look back on and, you know, guys like Sebi, I think, geez, he used to be such a hothead. Like, he oh, he <laughs> just used to suck it up and yell at blokes <laughs> and now he's just mature and I don't know if that's Great becoming content, a father yeah. or things like that. But, um, yeah, I think the work you've done with so many of us and yeah, myself, like, I think I'm always a pretty positive and optimistic person. Um but yeah, definitely helped me out with a bit of belief, and um, you know I think I'm pretty cool and calm out out on the field. But I think for me, just got to keep it simple. And um, yeah, there's a few things in my game, chatting to Ben, um, which I really focus on now. Every game, I write a few letters on my hand to remind me of sort of how I can play and help my mates. Um, so I think it's probably a bit of a natural sort of development in footy. You, when you first start, you're just sort of worried about yourself and mm -hmm. trying to get your career going. But then you're old enough and you want to start winning more and um, yeah, the way that you can do that is to help your teammates. So that's something that I definitely focus on more now. So what are those letters and words? Can we yeah. dive in a yeah. bit more? Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, so right, Eve, which is for edge. Um, that's a reminder for me to defend strongly for someone who's, you know, never really been a defender. Mm -hmm. um, all right, W for want the ball. Um, yeah, I think take a bit of responsibility for the, the ball use in the back half and... Um, you know, I feel like it's one of my strengths when I get the footy, so it's remind me to work hard and um, get the ball more. I think you know, it's a bit of a balance. I don't want to be too selfish in that, of course. Um, then D stands for demand, so that's more about me trying to help others and um, you know, be better trying to challenge them more on field and off field, I guess. And um, I think it's probably helped me a bit more with my leadership and guys probably looking to me more to, to help them because I think, yeah, I'm you know I'm not that young now. I'm 27, played a lot of footy, so. I think guys sort of rely on me a bit more and I definitely want to bring that more in my game to be able to help guys. Question for you, mate, and this is on behalf of our team. Is How, it? Yes, because I think this is where our growth, or lots of where our growth lies. Yes. How, you just made a point there around at some, at some stage you made the transition from it's about me 
and my performance to now where, of course, it's still about your performance, but like it's the team. It's the team that matters. Yeah. How can we get more of our team in that mindset, um, thinking team first rather than how am I going? What ideas you got for us, mate? Yeah, it's tough. It um, yeah, it took me a while. I think it's for well, a lot of it guys. How did, how, does it happen? how did it happen for you, do you reckon? Well, I think once you find it pretty comfortable, yeah, you start getting pretty comfortable with your spot in the team, um, which, yeah, for me, didn't really happen until last year where I felt like I was going to get picked every week. Um, so I think naturally you sort of take on a bit more of the load of the team. Um, yeah, I think it's just conversations that need to be had and... You know, the good teams have more guys who are willing to help others, I think. And, um, yeah, the quicker we can get guys to that level, it's only going to help us. But it is tough when guys come in, you know, it's a, there's a lot to take in in, in AFL footy. And, um, yeah, confidence, belief and trust, I think, yeah, it's really hard to develop. So I don't know if I have many ideas, but... Um, that, that last, yeah, one, that last word of trust you mentioned, um, from not being a player anymore but now being on the other side of the fence seeing how you go about things and what you do uh, you haven't missed you don't miss sessions so you know what you're going to get every time you're on the track I think the only game you've missed in the last two years is uh, you know hammy awareness last, late last year so the fact that you're turning up to training you're on the track every every day you're playing every game that builds trust from not only playing group and yourself but I think the coaches and the people upstairs well that are making these decisions like we know what we're going to get out of sinks every week we don't have to try and you become one of us where you start to challenge those other people on ground and whatnot so I think the big one well from my point of view is the trust that you've got from not only the pain group but upstairs as well is huge so it's one thing that you should be pretty proud of yeah and I think as a you look at the leaders and you know they're guys we trust um so it's the challenge for, for younger players especially but um, you know, when guys are inconsistent, it's hard to trust them. Um, you know, and yeah, ultimately you just want consistency from guys for, for their effort and the way they put in. Like, you know, guys aren't going to keep heaps of goals every week, but if you can trust that they're going to do the team things and, um, you know, give you everything to win, well, you probably can't ask for too much more. Since you're one of our, I would say, calmest players on the field, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, if not the calmest. It, does that come naturally to you? Is that like, I know you're a pretty level-headed guy. You're pretty, you're pretty reserved, and you take everything in stride, seemingly. But you know, like you get a you get a brain in there, and it's thinking a lot, and it has the same emotions that everybody else experiences. The same emotions that everybody else does. How do you maintain your composure under pressure, consistency of performance under pressure? How, how does that happen, mate? Can you like give us some insight there? Yeah, well, in terms of performance, that probably hasn't always been the case until the last couple of years, okay. I wouldn't say. Um, but yeah, I think naturally my personality, I'm yeah, pretty level-headed, as you said. Um, I don't like looking far ahead, making plans. I'm a bit forgetful, so, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I just, I don't really think about things that are too far in the future or um, things that happen. I think I'm pretty pragmatic and it's right, oh, that's happened, move on, do something about it. Um, I'm not overly emotional. Um, I have some guys around me that are overly emotional. And <laughs> Names. That's, that's all Name right. them. Um, Dougal in the back line, <laughs> of course. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's probably something that's come naturally to me. Um, but once you get to AFL, it's kind of different. It's like a whole other level. So mm. I think especially over the last couple of years, I've probably developed my skills there. And um, I think for me, trying to help others really sort of it has helped me in terms of that stuff like when you think about yourself I think that's when you know things can kind of get a bit too much and mm. get a bit overwhelmed overawed whereas when I help others that's I think when I'm at my best um, that's been a bit of a focus the last few years like especially in pre-season when you're doing running and things like that not just thinking about yourself trying to help others and yeah, I think it's made me a better teammate um, a better player but yeah, you know, we do a lot, a lot of work with you, obviously, in this space. And, um, yeah, I mentioned those three words before that I, I write the letters on, on my hand. And, um, yeah, I think that really helps me be calm. And it's not always easy. I've still lost it a few times 
this year. Probably, you know, most well, weeks have, I mean, have <laughs> some time, <laughs> occasions. We see, we lost a few years ago. Yeah, we see, we're obviously the two on the bench at C, you come off. So we, we wouldn't say that you've gone, or well, not on the bench anyway, maybe out on the field, but yeah. you're pretty calm. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. No, yeah, it's I mean, one of your great strengths. Yeah, and I, I feel like when you're not, you might not be helping others. So yeah. I feel like the best way to help others is, is to be calm and, um, you know, as a more experienced player now, yeah, a lot of guys look to you, a lot of younger guys, like we've got Pato, Hunter in, in the back line who you know, haven't played that much footy, so how can I help them um, be better players? And, yeah, I think that helps me too. Yeah. So a couple of things, mate, I'll pick up there. So when you are feeling pressure, you revert to, rather than me, and how am I going? It's right, how can I help somebody else? Okay. Get, get engaged in the moment in the game. You've got your... You know, trigger words that help keep you focused when your mind wants to take you other places to outcomes or mistakes or whatever you're doing um, and you've got a sort of a sort of a natural ability in some respects to remain in the moment like you said you're pretty forgetful which is a great skill on the footy field I don't know if, or, or you know well, life not as good maybe but yeah. on the footy <laughs> on the footy field you want to like move on like forget that that's gone now um, and you don't, do you say you don't like planning stuff that much? Yeah. You're not in the future too much? Yeah, correct. <laughs> Mate, what a template. Yeah. No, I think, um, you know, I just accept the fact that footy's, there's so many mistakes in a game of footy and we're all going to make them. Um, I've never really been one to dwell on them. I think that's come pretty naturally to me. Like, I know, I just feel like I'm going to do far more good than the mistakes I make. I'll, I'll miss a few kicks, but I'll also hit plenty of targets. So, and the game's just too quick you just have to move on and mm. you know if you don't it's going to have an effect on yourself and your teammates yeah for the next play so you know, i feel like i've always been someone who's been able to move on pretty quickly and um yeah it's it's not always easy like i've still had times in my career where i've lacked a bit of belief but yeah i feel like now i'm always just going to bounce back go again can i ask then how has that changed with starting to get some attention from half forwards or other teams now putting in work to you have you found that another you know, step up in how I'm going to, you know, how now do I beat these opponents? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, something I've never had to deal with yeah. before. Um, yeah, so it's another challenge. Just got to learn. And you know, there's a few guys around who've been tagged. And um, yeah, I think for that stuff, it's more just about how can we use that to our advantage? Um, you know, how can we set up at stoppage so that if I am getting tagged, we can maybe get a drop off defender who can impact the field further down and and things like that. So. No, that's not about me trying to get heaps of the footy. It's but it's just about how I can help the team. And um, yeah, I'd much rather win than, than me have a, a day out, especially you know when I'm getting tagged. This is why we got him on. <laughs> These answers are perfect. Yeah, no, he's a role model, role model ci citizen for us. Um, I'm interested, mate. Like we've alluded to it a little bit, You're a bit of a quieter guy probably compared to some. Um, but you're a leader too. How do you how do you combine these things? Because for most people, they think leadership, we're going to be loud and making the big speech. That's not you though. So what's what's leadership look like for you and how have you grown in this space? And where would you like to get to? Sorry, there's like five questions there, but <laughs> <laughs> just work your way through them. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm not the loud type, the type to give big speeches. Um, I think I've always been someone who's led by my actions, both on and off the field. I think I'm someone who works hard um, you know, out on the track and, and in the gym, um, but you know, also does the right things off the field to allow me to train and you know, barely miss a session. Which I've been pretty lucky with injury and things like that. But also, obviously, I'm doing some things right off the field. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd I'd love to be in the leadership group. Um, haven't been voted in yet, but yeah, I think I've definitely made some good strides in that. And yeah, I think it comes with you know some better form and feeling comfortable in the team. Um, but I think what's driven me more is I just want to win now. And, um, yeah, I think that's made me a better player. It's made me far more desperate. Um, and that's why I want to help others because I just, yeah, I want to be a part of a winning team. And, you know, I'm sick of losing. I'm sick of this club losing. And you know, I want to play finals more often. Is that all your questions? Did I miss any? I think so. <laughs> um, where can we improve, mate? Where do we need to, what do we need to improve on? Do you reckon for the, the Saints? Team? Yeah, for the Saints to to do that, to be a consistent team, to play finals. 
What do we need to, what do we need well, to get better at? Yeah, it's the word consistent uh, in a lot of the things we do. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty quiet and we've got a lot of guys who are like that, but I think we just need more guys to come out of themselves and, and challenge each other more. Um, because in the first half of the year, when we were consistent in a lot of areas, we were playing some pretty good footy, but we've dropped off in the second half clearly. And yeah, there is that consistency and continuity, and you know you start start to lose trust. I think yeah, when you know that guys are going to do the team things, footy can be a pretty easy game at times. But when they go away from that, yeah, it's pretty challenging. And yeah, AFL is so tough. There's no easy games, and if you're slightly off, you get beaten and yeah, unfortunately, that's been the case more often in the second half of this year, mm. but, which is frustrating because we know our best footy is very good. Um, but yeah, we seem to be pretty inconsistent, which we probably have been across my whole career so far. Yeah. Jerry, any more footy questions? Because I've got a couple of outside of footy questions. Uh, no, we can move so to Jack. the outside. We can move to outside. All right. We um, have a game. We have, remember, we have a game tomorrow. So yeah, he's going to uh, he's going to get out of here. Got to go walk Virgil. Yeah, Virgil. So you got a dog? Mm. Oh. Yeah, got a dog. <laughs> big big Liverpool man. Right. So Virgil yeah. Van Dyke. Ah, of course. Um, how old's Virgil? And what breed? He's an Aussie Shepherd. He's huh. a year and a few months old. Right. Yeah. yeah he's going all right. Yeah. He's and starting to get to a good age. Starting to behave better and right. chill out a bit more. What sort of yeah. parent are you? <laughs> um. I'm a good, I'm a good parent. Right. Yeah. Disciplinary. Discipline. Yeah. Like yeah. you're not on the bed. Yeah. You're not on the couch. Yeah. If yeah. you're inside, you chill. Yeah. No toys. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is challenging. He's an Aussie shepherd. He wants to be running around and yeah. doing all sorts of things. Um, yeah. yeah. Some of the garden's been destroyed, but that's okay. He's he's young. Hole, yeah. Dig a hole. Dig hole. Dug holes early. Fill them with pepper. Got rid of, rid of all the grass. I put fake grass in. That's hard. That's been to a good. Dig. good can't, <laughs> can't dig that. Yeah. But the um, garden lighting's come up recently, huh? as it has the sprinkler system. Um, All right. There's uh, been a new, new barbecue cover purchased. He's chewed on his kennel and the day bed. Yeah. A few of the weatherboards. There's a list. There's a list. We could go on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the disciplinarian approach. But Discipl- you know, like it's working it, progress. It's hard because long days at training and yeah, um, yeah, no, I get you. Yeah. But for the most part, he's pretty good. But he knows when he's doing the wrong thing. Yeah, he, he knows. knows. Um, now you got a housemate. Yep. Yep. Got D Mac. D Mac in there. Mackenzie. Been Saints living with favorite. me for how long? You been living together, you guys? Yeah. About two years ago, you moved yeah. in. Twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, well, it's coincided with both of you guys. Like, I, I'm not. I'm just putting two and two together here, but. You yeah. two guys have gone from <laughs> the start of 2020. Like, D-Mac did not play in 20. Like, mm. unbelievably. Yeah. He did not play yeah. a game in yeah. 2020. And now he's one of our most, you know, sort of consistent performers, along with yourself. Is it... What are you What are you guys doing at home there <laughs> <laughs> to get this, this kind of consistency? Two PS5 what, What's up? happening yeah. in the room? Chairs. <laughs> what are we doing? TV. I don't know. It's just it meditating is. all day. Yeah. It's just yeah what, what, what are we doing in there? Just having all the right conversations. Yeah. Challenging no, each I other. I don't know. Home. It's... Um, I think it's been it's been good for both of us. Um, he's a bit more social than me, so he's a bit more willing to, you know, do things and hang out with people, and then brings me along, which is good. And um, yeah, I think just a bit of maturity, and we're, we're growing up. Um, I love living there by myself, but and I was pretty picky. I, I said to, I was the only only DMAC I said if you want to move in, you move in. I had a few of my schoolmates ask me, yeah. "Oh, I'll move in." I was like, "Oh, nah, probably <laughs> no, not." You won't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boys. <laughs> um, but yeah, like he's he's very easygoing, like me, and we're not too focused about footy when we're at home, um, which is good. That's what I wanted in a housemate, and that's why you know I was pretty keen to get him him on board. But um, yeah, I think getting him closer to the footy club, um, yeah, he seems to really be invested in in footy and and, and this footy club. So I think for a while there, I was kind of like. He's just so easygoing and carefree. I was like, does, does this guy care about footy at all? Like, mm. You know. Mm. <laughs> um, but he does. So, yeah, it's been great. Mm. Love living with him. He's, yeah, it's been a really good housemate. It's, it's interesting, the, um, the transformation of, of, you know, this isn't about Daniel McKenzie, this podcast is about Jack Sinclair, but he, you know, like his transformation was he's significant in the last two years <laughs> along with, you know, along with your own. What do you guys like to do? In your in your house there, what are you sort of getting up to? Uh, Do anything together? Not really. Go out, yeah. shoot some hoops. Yeah, um, 
But yeah, probably a lot of gaming. Gaming. Watching TV. What are we on the yeah. is it the PS five? PS fives, yeah. yeah. I'm in the second bedroom, he's down in the living room and headsets on. Headsets on good. and yeah, a few yeah. other boys and Yeah. What are you playing? Yeah, it's good fun. Uh we mix it up a bit. Yeah. Been playing a lot of FIFA recently. Yeah. Um Call of Duty, NBA two K. Yeah. F one, new F one. Ah. Yeah, it's been all right. Yeah. Um Fall Guys. Yeah, it's a few options. Good, good, good selection. Keep it fresh. Yeah, so you're sort of talking there about having balance. You know, yeah, yeah, people listening, maybe they like yeah. to do reading or they like to go for a walk or they play yeah. an instrument or whatever it is, but you're looking for some balance away from your profession. Yeah. Like we, yeah, no, I feel like we're both pretty hard workers when we're here, but when I'm not at footy, I just, yeah, I don't want to be doing much. Yeah. Besides, you know, I have to walk the dog, but yeah. Yeah. You don't need to roll your eyes when you do that one. It's, That's part oh, of being early a parent. mornings. I oh, know. <laughs> Um, no, we're done. Uh, is there any other questions that you think we've missed here? Sinks? What else? Do, what else do the people need to know? Nothing. Not not much. I've confessed my sins. No. Well, on behalf of Ben and I and all the listeners, thank you very much. We know you're having a great year. All the best for the final few games of the year, mate. And uh, thank you for being the first current player on the long game. Pleasure. Hey, great. Thank you for dropping by and um, sharing some of that stuff. So valuable, like the, you, the spot you've reached in your career. Um, second the best and fairest last year. A big contender to you know go better than that this year. And such a big reason why the Saints have, you know, are, are improving as a team. Great. You're a great player to watch. Um, thanks for joining us, mate. Thank you both. Hey, Ben. Jerry. Impressive uh, person we have there in Jack Sinclair. Yeah, it is. We're really lucky to have him. I know. Club, I mate. agree. Uh, what do you think? Um, so it's interesting because before I arrived at the club, he'd been a pretty much a regular in the team. Mm-hmm. So he played, I think, the maj- large majority of games and um, with, with some success. Probably not the success he would have liked, but you know he's a pr- basically a regular. And then in our first season, the footy club, he did not play mm. for the first half of the year. He's just kicking around. And um, what impressed me, even in that period of time was just the way that he just accepted okay this is where I'm at at the moment how do I change my circumstances you know what can I do to get back in the team rather than you know as we as we all know is what comes naturally is to his terms soak it up Mm. and look for excuses and who's to blame and which that's quite natural in human nature but he was able to sort of override that and go okay I just need to get to work and earn me spot back and which he did and the, yeah it just ever since that that practice game against Carlton in, in Brisbane um, I don't think he's missed a game since or maybe he's missed one it was just the one he's been, yeah. but he's been probably yep. do you reckon our most consistent player of that period I know Steely's Steely's probably on the best and fairest yeah well anyway. Steely missed a fair few this year yeah his shoulder. so yeah I'd, I'd, and that's the thing for me that he's never you never notice when he's low and you never notice when he's high and I think that yeah. for an athlete especially is something that is a great um, something great to have because you never you know we always say it it's never as good as it seems and it's never as bad as it seems mm-hmm. and he's one that that lives that so um, that and the, with what I mentioned to him within the podcast of the trust that he has from not only the players but basically the whole football club of how how he goes about it how important he is um, I think that gives him the confidence to go out to training and games on the weekend and, and produce what he does. Yeah, like he, he has a great perspective. Um, and I loved what he said around when he's under pressure, what does he do? He thinks about what others around him need mm-hmm. rather than we can become, you know, when we're under pressure, when we feel under threat, we, we look internally. We go into, you know, we self-protect. This is hundreds of thousands of, well, thousands of years of biology. Um, whereas with Jack he's found a system to manage when he feels under pressure and it and it involves helping others around him uh remaining present not getting too not getting hung up on mistakes and not getting too far into outcomes or should be's could be's what ifs um which are some really great skills for an athlete looking to perform but actually all, all of us too yeah very impressive very very impressive hey uh enjoy your game day prep i know we don't want to hold you up too much longer prep mate i need to get going now i got some signs to hold up look Ho- f- oh hopefully not too many signs it means things aren't going well look when that forward to seeing you at the game tomorrow yeah good on, jerry see you ben good night all thanks for listening if you've enjoyed the latest step of the long game don't forget to subscribe 
leave a kind review and tell all your friends. And remember, breathe in and breathe out.